I know all of you have opinions about Michigan last year, and some of you just hate Michigan, and some of you love Michigan, but everyone's got an opinion about Michigan's team last year. I'm not here to, I'm not here to relitigate the whole Connor Stallions thing. You think what you think about that. I think that when I watched the NFL draft this past year, or this past weekend, it really put a finer point on what I've been thinking about this past year's Michigan team. So they had 13 drafted, and only one guy went in the first round. So some people took it upon themselves to pretend like that was an indictment against Michigan. And I didn't view it that way. I viewed it as Michigan being what I call the last great college football team. I think if I write a book about the 2023 Michigan team one day, I may call it the last great college football team. It's not the last college football team that will be made of great players. What I mean is, when will a title ever be won in this manner again? The last two years, okay, they've had 22 guys drafted. 11 of 22 of them were blue chip guys. Depending on where you look, only one of them was a five-star, and McCarthy, some places, wasn't even a five-star in the final rankings updates. So my point is, they didn't do it the Bama way, where you just go load up on five-star guys, and you look at them and say, yeah, I mean, if they don't get hurt, they'll, they'll end up being drafted pretty high. That's not exactly the way it works, but that's the way that the elite teams do it. Michigan hasn't recruited at a truly elite level. They brought in guys, they developed them. Uh, the 2023 Michigan team is the only team to have more than 10 guys drafted, but only one first-round pick in the history of the draft. So there were a bunch of really good players. There are guys that probably are sophomores, juniors, that may end up being first-rounders, but I'm talking about the veteran chunk of the team. That veteran chunk, that veteran crew of this Michigan team, a lot of whom you saw just get drafted, they came in together, they lost early together, they developed together, they stayed together when there were options to go elsewhere. And when Michigan's NIL package was not exactly matching dollar for dollar with some of the big boys, they stayed there anyway, and then they won together. It's just not a story you're going to tell a whole lot in the future of college football. That's not the way it's going to work anymore. So you may hate Michigan. Uh, you may have not liked some of the off-the-field headlines uh, that circulated around that team this past year. I can only speak for myself. I'm able to remove it a little bit when I think about this past year's team. And I think about some of the, the positive aspects, things that I love about college football, things that as we get further removed from a bygone generation, it'll sound more and more like an Andy Griffith episode in your mind. Kids, if you don't know, just look it up and learn to whistle while you're at it. It'll just be the kinds of things you talk about in, in almost like a fairy tale type manner about what teams once were, how teams were constructed. So I don't know, maybe that's a little romantic of me, but that's how I feel about Michigan. I don't look at this whole, did they or did they not break any draft record? How many guys went first round? I don't, I don't care because I'm a college football guy. I'm not an NFL guy, so I don't really care about that either way. There was this unmistakable confidence around this Michigan team last year that I really didn't get slapped in the face with until the week of the Rose Bowl. I was at the Michigan-Penn State game, and I was at the Michigan-Ohio State game, but I wasn't around Michigan as a team, around their players, talking to their coaches as much as I did at the latter portion of the season until the Rose Bowl week. So the Rose Bowl week, they go out to California, Bama goes out to California, we're out there, and I never will forget how quietly confident that Michigan group was. And the reason I mention it is because, in my experience, most teams, when they face Bama under Saban over the years, recently when teams have paced Kirby Smart in Georgia, they think they have to do something different than what got them there because they think what got them there is not good enough. Michigan was just so quietly adamant that we don't need to change a thing, man. We know exactly who we are. We know exactly how we win. We're not going to change anything. We think we're good enough to beat them. And they were right. What Michigan was was good enough to beat them. And two years earlier, those same guys are standing down there and they're losing playoff games last year. The year before, they're losing a playoff game. The year before that, they're standing down there getting body bagged in the Orange Bowl by Georgia. That is a really good college football story. Well, it didn't start off with fireworks. It ended with it. There were several duds along the way. And think about how much pressure was riding on this past year. Michigan won the national championship, so that's what you'll remember. What if they didn't? 
What if they had lost to Ohio State? Or what if they had lost in the semifinal to Alabama? That game went to overtime. What if they lost that game? Instead of Harbaugh goes out a winner, there's the maize and blue confetti, J.J. McCarthy completes his story, that team completes their journey. What if it was they choked in the semifinals for a third straight year? It's like the Atlanta Braves of the 90s. Best regular season team. What did you do when it really counted? At least the Braves won one. They'd say Michigan didn't even win one. So that was a big-time moment for them this past year. That's how I'll remember it. Remember it however you guys want to.